Hello and welcome to the Two Dyspraxics. I'm Barbara Neal. And I'm Matthew Munson. This is episode 15 in which we're going to talk about our own personal experiences with driving. Um, I suppose we'll start with me because <laughs> I've been driving a very, very, very long time. I passed my driving test in 1980, so uh, that's when I was... 1980? Yeah. <laughs> I was born in 1981. Well, there you are, you see. I've been driving longer than Matthew's been on the <laughs> Although I did have um, about eight months off, um, thanks to my frozen shoulder, which is now virtually mended. Look, look at that. Oh, sorry, that's it. Look, just to prove that I can do it later on. So they... I, I haven't got a frozen shoulder, uh, frozen shoulder, but I just like to do that. Yeah, I know. He was doing that to tease me, but now I'm trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, enough of this tomfoolery. Um, I passed my driving test in 1980. It took me three attempts, actually, and um, the first attempt was probably a disaster <laughs> from beginning to end. I was so nervous. But I think, in fairness, it was the nerves that let me down rather than lack of driving ability because I had quite a lot of driving lessons and um, and I felt reasonably confident but I just wasn't happy about having somebody sitting next to me watching my every move and I'm not comfortable about that sort of situation now anyway. Um, so it was that that let me down, it was that that made it quite difficult. Um, How many lessons did you have by that point? Oh gosh, I honestly don't know, I can't remember because I had one set of lessons when I was about 17 and then my driving instructor didn't turn up once and I just didn't bother to read books so I just ended up not having any for some time and then starting again um, a few years later. So um, how many altogether? I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I took a second test and I really believe, I still believe I should pass that second so I maintain I drove better on that one than I did on my third <laughs> and uh, I really do but I knew I would fail it because we all came out to the test centre and um, and I got one that was yeah everybody else took their their students into the car park to get them to read the car you know they you have to read the car registration number it's a sight test I suppose really and mine took me down to the road and picked a car that was about three times further away than the others and I thought oh, <laughs> Whether he already passed his quota or not for the week, I don't know, but he was, oh, he was terrible, he was a nightmare. And, um, and then the third time, I got through it, you know, and it was, it was really quite straightforward. Um, I didn't really encounter any major difficulties when I was learning, because my view is that if you have a good driving instructor, they're going to be patient anyway, so it shouldn't really make any difference whether you have dyspraxia or not. If you choose a good driving instructor, they will need to be patient, regardless of what your own particular circumstances are, and a good driving instructor will be able to adapt the way they teach to the way you need to learn. That's, that's my view on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you're going through the learning to drive crisis at the moment, At 32, you? I am learning to drive at the moment. Um, I've done it before, when I was 18, I think, uh, I started to learn. Um, took six driving tests. Uh, it wasn't all to do with my dyspraxia, I was an absolute atrocious driver. Um, well, thank you, cameraman. <laughs> thank you, cameraman. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll, um, we'll give you slightly, slightly higher pay. We'll, we'll give you three tweets to do and stuff. So. Uh, um, doesn't do much lazy most of the time. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, so we... Um, oh, well, where's the mic? Oh, where's the mic? Just making sure that they can be... We can be no, it's fine. No, it's fine. Just making sure. <laughs> there we are. But thank there you, Sam. Mic. Thank okay. you, Sam, man. Man? <laughs> Woman. Woman. I'll probably anyway. make it... I'll probably make it tell those big people behind us. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> the crew. The crew. <laughs> thank you, team. Um... Sorry, back on topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've taken six driving tests, and um, each kind of progressively worse, I think. Um, not all with because of my dyspraxia, although that had a part to play. That's what I was going um, to say, actually. What was it you think let you down? When I you think I was just a, a crap crash? driver, to be honest. I think I was just generally crap. I mean, partly it was perception, like distance, um, and then perception that like, went around me, which obviously is part of my dyspraxia. Mm -hmm. um, but partly it just was a crap driver. Wasn't paying as much attention to the road. I was 18. I was young, and I, I don't just know. Ready? Yeah, I just confidence-wise, absolutely right. I wasn't ready. Um, and, and yeah, part as I say, part of it was just back to you, the, the, the distance and the perception, awareness and stuff like that. But, but also, I just I was crap. I think generally driving. 
I said my my driving instructor, um, lovely guy, a uh, guy called David, and he's still a driving instructor now. And I think I was his kind of probably worst, uh, worst, worst fail way, I guess if you say. Um, and I, after six six attempts, after my six my six um, exam, I just I gave up. I just thought I can't do anything more. I had other, I had other, other things I wanted to spend my money on. I more than anything, 19 year old lad. At that mm-hmm. point, I was just interested in other things. Um, I kind of got away with it for for years, and then I basically I, I essentially I made a bet with a friend um, last year in 2012. If you're watching this kind of another year, sorry, but to me last year was 2012. Um, basically, living in the past. We're living in the past. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This is this is now. This is current. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, for a friend of mine um, who was was as underconfident driving as as, as I was, uh, and some still am. Um, her partner is a driving instructor. And he said to her, um, I said, yeah, come on, learn to drive, It'd be, I'll, I'll teach you, very very patient, uh, driving instructor guy called John. So she said, okay, I'll learn with you. And I basically made a bet with her uh, one evening over a, over a curry. Never made a bet over a curry because you'll always lose. That's all I'm finding out. Um, I said that if she ever passed her driving test, that I would take lessons with her other half, with driving instructor. Um, anyway, she passed on her second go, um, so I had to then fulfill my end of the bargain. Um, and it's interesting, kind of after uh, on my third one I started, so it was like 12 years in between my last lesson and this one, and it it feels different this time. I'm I'm still not I, I'm not the world's most natural driver. I'm no Jensen Button or I don't know, a famous driver though. I don't know Jeremy Clarkson or whatever. Um, I don't know why I know Jeremy Clarkson, but because you've got his book on the Actually, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's probably why I'm reading his book at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, famous driver or whatever. Um, I'm I'm no I'm no natural driver. Um, I'm comfortable enough on the roads. I can drive. Um, perception is still an issue for me. Um, I have to kind of look, do extra work on distances between cars, like distance in the car in front, like the two second rule, distance to the car on the left if we're driving past a, a row of parked cars. Um, I'm doing extra work to try and teach myself how to deal with that, um, and that's tough. I could make a suggestion actually because yeah. um, that's I'm a hidden therapist. Well, actually, fun enough, I, I do, I, I do think, especially I tell you what, especially for the tests, yeah, I will well, need, yeah. I'll need something for that. Yeah. Well, um, because I am a hypnotherapist, I do help people with driving confidence. So whether that's before or after the test, because some people can pass the driving <coughs> test, and then, um, you know, I've, I've encountered people in the past, they pass the test. And then the nerve just goes, and they're so anxious about going out on their own that the confidence needs to be built up again. So, driving confidence, driving theory test, the practical test, it can be helped. And because I'm dyspraxic myself, I understand the difficulties that you have as a dyspraxic person. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, this is an unashamed plug. I'm aware oh, of yeah, that. no, why not? But, Absolutely. Um, but it does help. I'll be parking my difference. book in a minute, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, if you. If you want to no, see no. Therapy. Actually, we could use that on our episodes as well, kind yeah, of definitely. talk about the yeah. the no. Obviously, I, don't, I know you can't film the hypnotic session itself, but um, no, in I, terms of I being in contact, but, but, um, but we can certainly talk about yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. that's another that another episode as well. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I think for me, I think I'll need that. And it's interesting you saying about kind of driving solo, but um, I've got so used to driving with with John now. I mean, John takes me certain routes. I live in Broadstairs and the nearest test centre to me is Herne Bay, so that's about a 30 minute drive from, from where I live to, to Herne Bay. And we, so we drive, we have a two hour lesson every week, and we drive to Herne Bay, do some test routes, do some manoeuvres, and then drive back again. And I've, I've started to get used now, after about, after about three months worth of lessons, um, I've started to get used to the routes. So I can sometimes just, if John says, right, we're going to go this route, so I can sometimes just direct it myself. But I'm. It's weird. I I'm just not confident with independent driving yet. I, I'm so used to John saying right, end of this road, turn left, and then turn right, and then left. So part of the test now is you have to do ten minutes independent driving. So the examiner will say right, you, you're going to encounter three roundabouts. I want you to go left at the first one, right at the second one, or, or right at the third Ooh, one. Right. Um, I'm seeing obvious difficulty there. Memory. So, so you're given those instructions. Yeah. From the outset, you have to follow them. You, 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 you put up to the side of the road and you say, right, I'm not gonna, and, and independent driving is compulsory now. And mm. it takes the place of the second, because you know, in the past you used to do two manoeuvres. Yeah. Well, now you, only, you do one manoeuvre and ten one minutes. One memory test. And, but it, 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 it's a memory test. I mean, John has said to me that you can sort of ask the questions 
you know, if you get to that and you think, oh, I can't remember which way to go, you can you can ask. But I kind of, I'm, I'm still at the stage where I'm feeling uncomfortable asking because it's kind of, I'm always mm. kind of, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm driving in a manual car, so I'm thinking about the gear stick, the steering, I've got a roundabout head. Oh dear, now which way, now which way am I going again? Oh, that is know. that is difficult actually mm. because it, I think it, well it does, it puts dyspraxic drivers at dis, the disadvantage. Mm. The, the memory side, I mean, and as, as yeah. I say, they, 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 they do encourage you to ask if you can't remember, but I, you, you know, there is, for me, there's that fear about, you know, is, is that okay? Will I get marked down for it? Um, will will yeah. you start going, oh, if I ask him twice or three times because my memory is, is bad? Is it, um, Possible, or is it a good idea? Do you think to make the examiner aware that you have just passed? Well, y- yes, there is that as well. Um, I mean, for my first yeah. examiner all those years ago, I, I kind of I knew I'd got dyspraxia, although I didn't have a, an assessment back then. Yeah. yeah, didn't need to, but I didn't have one. Um, and and we did have a conversation about whether or not I should declare my point of level disability mm. at, at the test centre. Test centre. Um, and I kind of always refused because kind of time I, I didn't want to be, um, and it's something we've talked about a number of times before, I didn't want to be singled out as being disabled or mm. the special candidate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, And I, I didn't want kind of that, in you know, a mark on my uh, driver's license. Yeah. I, I wanted to think, yeah, I've got this on my own merits without anyone thinking of well, knowing I was dyspraxic. Um, and I, was just, I was afraid they put a big red D in a corner or something afterwards for yeah. dyspraxic or dunce or something like that. Um, because of kind of school days and my confidence mm-hmm. was really low and um, stuff we've talked about in the previous vlogs yeah, as infinitum. Um, so I sort of said, no, if I fail, I'm going to fail on, on, on the same terms as everyone else. Because it isn't the same term because I need to look at things in a slightly different way. Um, but it's funny, I'm 32 and just thinking about it now, I've still got a little bit of reticence. Uh, admitting that I'm dyslexic, uh, almost as if it's I don't want to be treated differently. Yeah. But I, I want I want the same opportunity as everyone else, not to be treated differently because that's I guess where the Equality Act um, comes in the way. But again, yeah. it's something else we mentioned in the previous talk about the self employment was um, we want to be given the equal opportunity, but is is it interpreted in the right way? I think the Equality Act is interpreted in the right way. And exactly. I mean, some help. It, in inverted commas because yeah. it isn't actually very helpful. No, no, and, and that's my fear that if I got, I don't know, help or they were kind of like, okay, we'll give you a bit of extra credit or extra allowance in your, in your driving test. Well, uh, do I want extra uh, that credit on my driving test? Because if I'm a bad driver, I quit because I'm a bad driver, I, I don't want to be given an extra couple of minors or something that, that I, yeah, I, mean, I don't I, know, I'm torn. Well, I can really understand that because I was very fortunate because I passed my driving test such a long time ago before you were born. So <laughs> and, um, I've awful <laughs> <laughs> it's no big deal. But um, because it was such a long time ago and the test was very different in those days, um, I'm not saying it was easier necessarily, but we didn't have this memory test aspect, which is um, oh the whole theory testing. So, so the but the test yeah. has actually been changed to disadvantage dyspraxic drivers. Yeah. Is yeah. what's happened. Well, they, I mean, even the theory test, I mean, you, you, have, you have to kind of get no, 45, 50 questions or something, I can't, <laughs> I can't remember, I want to go. Um, and then you have to get, you have to get so many, like a 90% pass rate or something like that, and then you do, you have a perception. So, for me, I, actually, funny enough, I'm, I am right here next to my bookcase, uh, and these are the, the test books I had to revise on. So, you had the highway code that I had to revise on, um, the theory test for car drivers, and the practical test, which I've come to the reading. Um, so, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got page after page of fold uh, in there on things that I just could not get into my head. Mm. So, even going over to the theory test centre on the morning of my test, I had this on the train. I was just checking again and again each page, and a couple of these questions that I was looking at came up in the test, and I'd been reading it half an hour before. I was just like, what's that again? Because of my memory. And it is just, it is learning by rote. And a friend of mine, that the friend I mentioned earlier, she is uh, she's an actor by profession and she has got a phenomenal memory recall because she has to learn lines and all that kind of scripts etc and and direction and her memory is is amazing so she got uh, 100% I'm sure she what I'm saying she got 100% on her theory test and I had a perception um, because she's got that memory memory recall um, I think I scraped a pass or no I did 
I scraped a pass on both the theory and the hazard perception. Um, not because I can't do it, it's just because I can't retain the information um, as easily as, as some people. Uh, and that was that's been that was really difficult. And that was, I, I got it's a lot of work I didn't see for a couple of weeks beforehand. I, I would have got some if we had been close together. I'd got some hypno from you. Yeah. Because I was so, I was getting so definitely. stressed and wound up and anxious about it. Um, I didn't want to kind of tell anyone where my theory test actually was. I'd have told you if you know give me hit period. Yeah. yeah before I'll be doing. I'm about to say physio for some reason. I don't know why I'm about to no, say that. Physio, but, no. uh, hypno, <laughs> hypnotherapy, not physiotherapy. <laughs> no. uh, and that's a different thing. Um, I do. I don't know. I, I got myself so anxious and stressed about this kind of memory test. Um, yeah, actually, the practical kind of seems, even though it's still that active thing, it seems almost like a walk in the park by comparison because it doesn't require memory retention per se. Although you do get asked about the questions about the car. Yeah, and I don't know anything about cars. It's, it's that um, you know the part you just told me about, which or told us about. Sorry, um, about you're given a series of instructions. Well, that's something mm. that um, people with dyspraxia notoriously mm. have a problem with. Yeah. So um, I think that there's an issue that needs to be brought up yeah. because we are being deliberately dis- well, perhaps not deliberately, but mm. um, but we are being disadvantaged. Yeah. No, I must have, about it. And yeah, I must admit, even for me, I hadn't really considered that before, but, it, but it's true. And uh, funny enough, I had a driving lesson when we were recording the video two days before the video was recorded, and we did independent driving, and we're driving through Herne Bay, and he gave me an instruction, he did three roundabouts, and I can't say he told me which way now he told me to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember distinctly having to ask him three separate times at the front of the roundabout. John, which way do you say again? Now, I'm allowed to ask which way, but that's the question I'm allowed to ask for the examiner. And my theory is, what if I ask him three times because I can't remember? Yeah. Will I be disadvantaged? Will I not? Yeah, well, I, I think that's... Um, I, 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 John believes not, but still, there's a concern about depending on who the driving instructor is, will there oh, be uh, an issue? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Driving um, examiner, sorry. Yeah. Um, that, that, so that's a, con- a concern from that point of view I have. It's it's the, the perception issue I'm working on, the... Uh, the distance issue I'm working on, but that you can deal with that, you can overcome. There's no doubt about it. But um, memory, I can't, I can't solve a memory problem. No, no. Who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen me before. In my life. <laughs> um, no, that really, seriously, that does concern me because it's, you know, it's one of the classic things that we struggle with. You know, if you say right, go upstairs, get three pink books and five yellow books and bring them all down here and then go and jump in a lake. Yeah, and, and we're not going to remember that. The only bit we'll remember is the jump in the lake bit because it's the last sure. thing we... Yeah, I, mean I, that, I can't, that's I can't really remember which book you said already. That's how bad my mood. I've already forgotten. Can I. Yeah. Can I, we'll seriously. have to watch this video back and actually <laughs> yeah. see what you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you can so, remember already, put it down there, would you please? No, no, what we don't want to know that. No, <laughs> 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 But, um, but no, I do think that that's a very serious concern because if you're given a set of instructions and you have to remember them, and um, remembering your set of instructions is not a part of learning how to drive as far as I'm concerned. Mm. It has nothing to do with learning how to drive. It's about um, memory. You know, and the driving test isn't supposed to be a memory test because when um, you're learning about um, hazard perception and so on, that's something that does actually come fairly naturally after you've, you know, when you've done it a few times, it just might take longer for it to sink in, longer for it, but it does become a natural process. Yeah. And if you're driving all the time, it's it's very, very natural. You don't have to think about it anymore. Um, but that's something, yeah, if someone were to get, because I've been driving so many years now, and um, I did have a, um, a seven-month break, thanks to my arm, and um, but now you know, I've been driving again for a while, and it's just... Like I was gonna say, like riding a bike, but I can't ride. A bike. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but if you could so ride a bike, it'd be like that. Be like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Yes, if somebody were to get into my car, I mean, it, driving is the most natural thing in the world to me because I've been doing it for so many years and on a very regular basis. But if somebody were to get into my car and say, right now, I'll turn left at the end of the road and then right and then second left, and I wouldn't remember that yeah. because. That has nothing to do with driving. It has I, I to do with navigating. Yeah, that's, which is a different that's a different skill. skill yeah. Uh, I, I almost need instruction like, okay, Matthew, it's coming up and now turn right. Exactly. That's what I need. You almost have a constant navigation. Exactly system. that. So, I mean, yeah, I can understand not wanting to divulge to an examiner that you're mm. dyspraxic because I certainly, well, I didn't know I was dyspraxic when I took my driving test. 
So um, it wasn't an issue for me because I was just another person taking a driving driving test as far as anybody was concerned, including me. Um, but if I were you, I would seriously have a chat with the driving instructor mm. and yeah. just point that out because it's something which has been changed to make it more difficult. For di it's not been changed to make it more difficult for dyspraxic drivers. But it's drivers, been changed and it makes it more difficult. Has, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, no, I mean, I think I've got a very good, um, a very patient instructor, thankfully. I make the same right. mistakes again and again and gradually it's getting better, but it is a, it's a process. Actually, I think it'd be interesting, by the time we, we publish this particular vlog, because I think we're about kind of seven or eight behind at the moment on where we're recording, this will probably come out in, I mean, we, I say currently we're in August 2013, mm -hmm. I don't admit that. Um, <laughs> time of why not? recording. Uh, time of recording. Short sleeves. Um, short, yeah, yeah can, can, can you tell, we're <laughs> in the summer. Um, Christmas, everyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 ho, 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 happy new year. Uh, actually, we'll probably be about that time. Yeah. Happy, new, happy 2014, everyone. Um, by then, I'll have, I'll have either passed or failed kind of three times, and that's my limit. If I, if I fail three times, that's it, I'm getting taxed everywhere after that. Um, well, so we'll, we'll try hypnotherapy. More. Well, yeah, it but makes I'll say perhaps if we, we, when I take my test, I haven't got a date for that yet. If we do another, if we do a, a video blog after my, your hypnotherapy with me and my test, yeah. and then we can kind of launch two videos kind of close together yeah. um, in, in the new yeah, year or, or whenever we launch it. Um, and yeah, get some feedback on that as well. Mm -hmm. If you have experience with driving or, or not wanting to drive, share your thoughts as well, and we can then follow that up in our next vlog when we, when we do that as well. So. Certainly, and in the meantime, as the two dyspraxics, I think we'll certainly do something about the dressing. Yes, absolutely, yes, I think we need to. And if you feel you, you went out there, you really thought we were doing this, if you kind of want some um, you know, help to kind of calm nerves or anything like that, I say, I mean, I'll say it for Barbara, she's a very good therapist, and it's true. Um, I'm not saying it because she's a friend, but it's, it's very true, and I'll be certainly seeking some help. I'm, I'm very happy to admit that, to, to get that. Um, on a side note, I have written a book, um, it's seven ninety nine for all the bookshops called Walking Bays. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, no, I have written the book, but you know, I, no. <laughs> sorry, a bit of exercise to come in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, so you the therapy, I think that's, for a lot of people, that would be a good. Yeah, if, if you want to have a look at the website, at my hypnotherapy website, um, just to get some more information, I always aim for complete success in one session, and I try to keep it as affordable as I can, so that I would rather help lots of people with one session each and get them, get them through the driving test and to feel um, like good, confident, safe drivers. So I'd rather get as many people as possible through it and sorted through it than um, just one or two in charge of So. Yeah, I, I do try to be as reasonable as possible. Although if but you want to pay more, pay it to me and I'll get a commission fee. <laughs> My agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take um, 20%. <laughs> but if you, if you want more information on the hypnotherapy, then please have a look at www.bneal-hypnotherapy.com. And we'll put that and in the yeah, thing down there. Yeah, we will. It's bneal-hypnotherapy.com. -E and on that note, on that, bomb, on, on that bombshell, <laughs> not a bombshell. <laughs> so by the time you see this, um, certainly I'll know one way or the other whether I passed or, or failed miserably. Thank you. I hope so. God, I hope so. After so long. Um, <laughs> actually, I'll tell you what we'll do in the in the thing below. Actually, yeah, I just got that. <laughs> Hip now will be fine. Um, exactly. In in the bit below, I'll I'll we'll put a note on saying yeah whether I passed or failed. Um, just so that you know. And then also we'll do a follow up vlog. Um, perhaps just before. Or just after my test, just to talk about the hypno that I received and how, how I felt it helped me perhaps as well. Um, we can't agree that I'm through for a bit there, but <laughs> we'll yeah. do that as well. Yeah, we will. So, okay, brilliant. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. Any, any other last um, minute? Um, nothing I can think of that I do, apart from the fact that it really does become, it might seem, to start with, it might seem like a nightmare. I have to say, in my very first driving lesson I had, I did actually come off the road, <laughs> but I was in, oh. I was in Moat Park. I know it sounds horrific now, but... I was in Moat Park in Maidstone, and so it wasn't as desperate as it could have been. I just sort of went onto the grass. It wasn't actually in Moat, was it? No. Oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving a, a, what do you call it? Automatic the car? car? No, no, no. Yeah, I was driving a car, but not one of those amphibious. Not amphibious. Oh. <laughs> but, um, no, I did come off the road because I thought, I will never get this. So I've got to concentrate on steering, look at the road, 
concentrate on what my feet are doing because you've got this bring the clutch up to biting point then you've got to do something with the gear stick and I thought I'll never get this it's far too complex but you do get it <laughs> you do and it takes a while but with practice you keep doing it and the more you drive the easier it gets and I don't even think about it now you know I can change gear with no problem when I need to Apart from when I've just been driving an automatic for a week. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Which but I've been doing recently, I forget to change gear now again. Just a minor thing, especially she's just driven 45 minutes down the motorway to come and visit me today. That's yeah. slightly worrying. I but... did, no, it was no biggie. It's just that I drove a little way in fourth instead of fifth. Or <laughs> I do that in my lessons all the time. I'm chatting away to my instructor and I'm going, oh, I've got another gear there, let's go to the fifth gear, shall we? Well, I don't normally do it, but because I've borrowed um, an automatic vehicle, and um, so I just got used to being lazy and not changing gear really, <laughs> going to the habit. But, um, but no, it, it does come very, very naturally and you just don't think about driving. I do actually really enjoy driving now. So if you are learning to drive and you do think that you'll never ever get used to all this coordination, you will. If you want to do it badly enough, it's motivation so you can do it. It's hopeless. It's happy for me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope. Bit hit and I'll be fine. Bit hit and I'll be fine. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. Uh, so any comments, etc., below, or private message, or any such technological advances that we've got these days. And uh, carry a pigeon. Carry a pigeon. <laughs> yeah, smoke signal. You yeah. know, let's like new coke or whatever. Black or white signals. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we can accept most communication methods. Semaphore. We won't necessarily be able to reply. If no. It's semaphore or something. <laughs> no, like that. we have, we have <laughs> our flags are in for repair at the moment, but apart from that, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well, we'd love to hear from you, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you very Absolutely. much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.